right, everybody, welcome back. January 2nd, 23, and we're going to get back to some of the Root Channel and talk about some of this severe weather that we are not only going through, but will be going through. And it's a little bit of a complicated situation, but that's why we're here. Right now, we're looking at the College of DuPage website, which is basically giving us an overall idea of our jet stream. And that is exactly what is going to cause and what is causing the big snowstorm in the mid to northwest, specifically the Dakotas area, Nebraska. Nebraska is going to get hit pretty hard. Pretty much a tale of two halves because down in this area is basically the opposite. We're going to have some severe weather tornado warnings, a lot of rain and moisture, and then just above that jet stream line where you can basically see the moisture here is a nice big winter storm. Now also very quickly, we've got issues going on in the West Coast as far as power outages. Now some of this could be due to the winds in California, but a lot of it also has to do with the topic we covered in a recent video with the wind speed, the two 250 millibar wind jet stream. I'll refer that video in the description box, but you can see we have over 40,000 people in California without power. We got 23,000 in Nevada without power. Down in Arizona, we're near that 13,000 mark. And then as we move up towards Colorado, where basically the beginning of this winter storm is taking place, is about 15,000 people without power. Now we're going to continue to see a trend of power losses going up in this direction, and then you're going to start seeing them down here in the south Southwest as well once that weather situation starts to take place which it basically already has now a lot of you may be seeing charts you're not used to for a while from this channel but this is our convective look chart this basically tells us where to expect the highest potential of tornadoes we could switch that over to the highest wind rates we're going to be seeing which is that northeast quadrant of Texas we got the eastern edge of Oklahoma Arkansas basically covered in that very high wind scale and then obviously the southern part of Louisiana Louisiana. Now keep in mind it is a much more broad area of wind than that as you can see with the 15 and the 5% but again this is all being controlled by the jet stream. Now I'll go ahead and play the jet stream and this is leading up to current time so you're going to see it loop over and over again. I'm going to kind of stop it right there. So I'm going to keep the freeze frame right about here so we can explain a few things. Now again those power outages we can see the jet stream is bringing those high winds into the western part of California exactly where those power outages were taking place. We have that dip in the jet stream right here which is allowing the cold air from the north to come down to create that snowstorm that could be giving us upwards of two feet of snow in some areas we have a chart we're going to show you on that as well but then on the other half of the coin as the jet stream rises above through the great lakes and into the northeast that allows the warm air from the caribbean to flow around the southeastern states and even texas now again that is why i showed you this chart here because this is where these high wind rates and and when you switch to the tornado section, this is going to be much warmer, severe weather, rain, tornadoes, straight line winds. And we even have a pretty high percentage of hail that would be taking place. But it ends right about here because that is where the jet stream ends. And everything on this side of the jet stream is going to be that cold air. Everything on this side of the jet stream is going to be the warm air. As of right now, we have about 14 to 15 states under a winter weather watch of some sort. Of course, we spoke about Colorado, Western. Wyoming, certainly Nebraska, South Dakota, and then we got this serious snow totals that could be possible in the areas of the Dakotas, Nebraska, and that most eastern edge of Iowa in the Omaha Valley. And it's actually kind of interesting because just as I was explaining that and talking about the possibility of Texas being affected by those power outages, take a look at this. The U.S. power outage website has just been updated and now we have over 14,000 customers out of the 12 million without power in Texas. That number will indeed rise and we're going to start seeing Oklahoma, Louisiana, Arkansas, so on and so forth, also being added to this list as the weather in this area begins to get more and more severe. I'm going to be linking this Yahoo winter storm expected to bring snow, freezing rain, and tornadoes to parts of the U.S. article to give you a better idea of what I'm explaining here. Because again, we have a winter storm directly above a severe weather situation taking place in the south. If we scroll down a little bit here, I just want to read this to you very quickly. The weather system is also expected to bring significant freezing rain to parts of northeastern Nebraska through southern Minnesota. The National Weather Service said it warned the freezing rain could pose further travel risks and cause power outages. That is going to be a big deal here as far as the power outage situation. So as we get back to our College of DuPage website and we move in showing us the last 18 hours of data, we can see now and understand why the West Coast
Coast and parts of the Southwest were the first ones to receive those power outages. This is considered the long wave infrared satellite and because of that weather moving in that is why we saw the power outages in California and now as we move towards more current time you could see that this strip of moisture over Texas is now beginning to be severe weather which is causing those power outages. Now as far as the tornado situation we can already see these storms popping up. In fact I'll back up a little bit here just as we get to about scene 17, 18 UTC time we start to see those storms bubbling up over the Louisiana, Arkansas, and then as we move towards the end of the frame, we can see why there is such a high risk of this severe weather going on. This is the most current frame right now, but again, the whole point of this video is to stress that the jet stream is super important, and it's exactly what causes very unique situations. It's almost like a yin-yang. We got the big winter storm going on up in this area with the low dip in the jet stream, allowing that cool air down. Then we have the uprise of the jet stream, allowing that warm Caribbean air to come in, meeting up with the moisture causing the severe weather and the tornadoes. I know many times my videos have a lot more editing involved in them, but we don't really need to do that in this situation. It's a very simple concept to understand that the jet stream is exactly what is causing this. Again, the warm air is allowed in this area, but it is not allowed in this area. This is all cold, this is all warm, and the upper level winds of the jet stream are exactly what controls that situation. Now you're looking at a chart here that goes through 120 hours of precipitation. So we're not quite done with the West Coast yet getting their fair share of moisture. I'm sure they're going to get a big snowpack up in the Sierra Nevada mountains, but they also may get a lot of rain because there's a second system on the way that happens after this one. And in some areas besides the tornadoes and the straight line winds, we could be looking upwards of five, six, seven inches of rain in a short period of time. And then in the previous video I made, we spoke about how this may turn into a nor'easter up here in the northeast that is why they call them nor'easters if you didn't know that but i will link that video as well because it's looking more and more like that is the situation and don't worry i know many people don't agree with me on this but i've seen it happen time and time again we just had that solar flare launch off the sun a few days ago and if you're looking at this wave right here and this yellow dot which represents earth not only are we currently getting hit with this solar wind but it's going to be happening through the third of january just as these storms are taking place and i'm telling you right now solar particles and solar wind hitting earth absolutely affect our weather and could potentially enhance these situations so we got to pay attention to space weather just as much as we got to pay attention to the weather on the earth itself this was part of yesterday's video we're looking at the 250 millibar jet stream line a very prominent line and this is what caused everything as soon as those high jet stream winds hit as soon as those high jet stream winds hit the west coast the power Power outages began. As you can see here, it's clear as day. The most prominent part of the jet stream was right over that part of California that lost power. As the dip came down, that's when we started losing power in Texas as it rose back up. And now that jet stream is way up here, allowing for all the severe weather to take place in the south. And what did we just learn, folks? When we got that up dip in the warm weather on this part of the country, chances are it's very, very cold in this part of the country. So a winter storm here, I don't know if they're going to name it Winter Storm Felipe or or not but what I do know is that we are in for some very severe weather on both sides of the country and finally just to touch on that January 3rd possible nor'easter we could be looking at it might be the fourth this is the proof for that as well as you can see here January 3rd 2023 current date we have a big wrap around over the Great Lakes well into Canada and over the northeast of the United States which in turn would cause that counterclockwise rotation of severe weather which is then dubbed a nor'easter Easter. So we got to keep an eye on what's going on here. Weather is an hour by hour situation, so things can change at any moment, but the information has looked pretty solid about what to expect over the next few days. My friends, I want to thank you all for taking the time to watch this video. Please keep in mind that your local news stations and weather companies are the most important things you can be listening to. Yes, I love bringing you guys this information, but when it comes to localized weather, it's very hard to predict. That's why I'm giving you an overall idea of what's going to be happening and that is why I'm telling you that the southeast is prepared for some very severe weather tornadoes straight line winds you name it and then we got our beast of a winter storm stretching from Colorado all the way to the Dakotas and already beginning to see that wrap around over the northeast which could lead to that nor'easter once again thank you all for taking the time to watch this video shout out to Canada you may very well be involved in this especially the areas of Ontario especially with the jet stream reaching up to those high 
high, high levels well above the northeast of the United States. All right, my friends, shout out to Canada, and I will see you all in the next video. Please stay safe and stay aware of your local weather. Take care. Bye-bye. Stop right there, my friends. If you have not already, click that subscribe button and don't forget to hit the bell icon. Click all and you will get all notifications from this channel. And trust me, you won't be disappointed.